All right, so today we're gonna to talk about my face before keto and intermittent fasting and after keto and intermittent fasting. And you're gonna learn seven things that your face can tell you about what's happening internally to your health and to your organs. Now, in the past, I've wrote a book about the body types and how you can identify what's going on inside hormonally with what's going on on the outside. And so looking at a face can give you so many clues on what's going on inside. Now, when I teach you this, promise me that you're not going to start evaluating everyone you know, because the temptation is going to be there. And so the worst thing you can do is start evaluating people on the street. So if you end up doing that, don't mention my name. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the shape of someone's face. Now, before I did keto and intermittent fasting, uh, my face was basically round. It was puffy. It was a bit fatty. I had a lot of fluid retention. It looked swollen, but that was actually fat and water retention. Now, before keto, I wasn't necessarily eating terrible junk foods. I was just eating too frequently. And I was definitely eating things that were not in the menu, like fruit, specifically apples. You know, one apple is 19 grams of sugar. So what I would do is after breakfast, which I don't consume anymore, I would take this apple, I would say about an hour and a half after breakfast, and I would just spread peanut butter on it, right? And so that would be my snack. And then at night, I would graze on nuts, the healthy snack, right? Well, little did I know, every time I ate any food, I, I was spiking insulin over and over and over. And so I had three meals, three snacks. That is six spikes of insulin, which kept my body from going into ketosis. And also, when you store sugar, you actually store water. That's the term carbohydrate. Carbohydrate comes from carbo or carbon in hydrate, as in hydration. So with every gram of glucose that's stored as glycogen, you're storing three grams of water. So carbohydrates make you into a fluid-filled sponge. So you can see in the past, the shape of my face was more round, it was puffy and basically just look fat. So number one, if someone has a round face, they have too much insulin and they are doing too many carbs. All right, number two, we're gonna talk about the eyes, specifically the tissue around the eyes. Now, if you look at my face around the eyes, you can see that there's some swollen tissue, okay? It looked puffy underneath the eyes with some darkening underneath the eyes as well. And even the eyelids were a bit thicker. So what's happening? Well, this is more fluid retention. The kidneys, which are severely affected by blood sugars, start to back up and the tissue around the eyes, especially the puffiness underneath the eyes, is a real good indication that the kidneys are backed up because you're retaining too much fluid. You know, the problem with knowing this information is that you see it all over the place. You observe it in people. And so the temptation is there. You just want to tell them, Listen, if you just change your diet, if you got off these carbs, that fluid will go away. But the best thing to do is actually to show them this video, not to evaluate them because it makes them wrong and they can be upset. And the last thing I want you to do is start a fight with someone uh, over Dr. Berg's video. All right, the next point, number three, is the actual eye itself, okay? If you look at the before picture of me, you'll see bloodshot eyes. Now, bloodshot eyes is a liver problem usually. It could be lack of sleep. In other videos, I talked about it being a deficiency of vitamin B3 and B2, but that's really just the tip of the iceberg. It's really a problem with your liver. Now, of course, if your blood sugars are off and you're eating a lot of carbs, the liver is going to be fatty. You're going to have decreased liver function. The liver is not going to be able to detoxify that well. In fact, I had bloodshot eyes for years, and I just couldn't figure it out. I remember one time flying to San Diego to a seminar held by Bernard Jensen, the guy who put colon hydrotherapy on the map. And so Bernard was doing this seminar and I stayed all day at the seminar. And then at the end, you got a chance to uh, stand in line and get to meet him to ask him questions. And uh, I remember staying in line all day long. And I finally got to meet him, shake his hand, and I asked him, why are my eyes this bloodshot? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know. So a little bit later, I think it was the day after my wife and I 
decided to drive to his house. And he lived in this trailer next to this place that had all these monks on this property and an orange grove. And we pulled up, he wasn't there, but we went into his trailer and just bought his colon hydrotherapy self colon cleansing kit. It was, I think it was called a, um, a colema, which is a combination between a colonic and an enema. And so that was the start of my colon cleansing phase, which didn't ever seem to help because colon cleansing doesn't fix your blood sugars. It doesn't fix your diet. It just keeps cleaning you out. But then you go right back to the same old, same old. But anyway, I had a combination of bloodshot eyes and I had severe irritation on the inside of my eyelids. It felt like sandpaper, okay? So my eyes were dry and red, but the inside of my eyelids were completely red and irritated. Now, looking back at that, that was a severe blood sugar situation. I was going right into diabetes and I didn't know it. But you can see in this picture, I had bloodshot eyes and that is liver stress. If I recall, even way before that, I think this is my late 20s, early 30s. For breakfast, I would be consuming a huge muffin or a donut or cereal. And I had no concept that that was creating a problem. And even after that, I think it, there was a phase where I was trying to sleep. So I would do ice cream every night before I go to sleep. So of course I had my share of carbohydrates and that was a, a big problem with the eyes. Your eyes have a lot of receptors for insulin and it is a main target that insulin in blood sugars will affect. All right, number four, okay, underneath my chin, I had fat underneath my chin. Now, this is just a spill off of accumulated fat because when you fill up the fat cells, then it starts spilling off into other places. The first place that someone stores carbohydrates as fat is in the liver, okay? And that fills up and then it starts spilling off into the organs. And so you get this little gut. And by the way, I had a pizza crust, okay, in my midsection. But as the fat starts building up, it starts accumulating in your face, underneath your chin, and that doesn't just affect uh, how you look, but that fat is also accumulating in the back of the throat and the back of the sinuses. And this is one of the reasons why people have sleep apnea and they snore. And so again, if you see someone with a thick neck, uh, they probably have sleep apnea and they probably are doing too many carbs. All right, number five and six have to do with the texture of your skin. My skin was very oily. Now, oily skin is a situation where your oil glands are producing too much oil. They're called sebaceous glands and the oil is called sebum. And so what's behind that? Too much androgens. Androgens are the male hormone. Now, the question is, why is the body making too much androgen? And the clue to figure this out is to look at a condition called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. In PCOS, which occurs only in females, you have this huge overproduction of androgens. And what's behind that is too much insulin. So insulin makes your androgens go too high. And if you've been watching my videos, you know what causes too much insulin. It is too many carbohydrates. So we're coming full circle to these darn carbohydrates again. Now, what I'm gonna say next is a little confusing, so just bear with me. One of the minerals that they use in skin cream for oily skin is zinc. And so zinc is really good for your skin. Now here's the confusion. Zinc also increases your androgens. Now, wait a second. I thought androgens cause sebaceous glands to cause more oil production. Why would we want to take more zinc to produce more androgens? Well, the answer to that is that zinc helps balance estrogen, okay? If you're low in androgens, it raises it. If you're high in androgens, it lowers it. It inhibits or blocks an enzyme in the conversion of testosterone to something called DHT, which is a powerful form of testosterone, which if too high can cause male pattern baldness and prostate enlargement and alopecia, which is hair loss. So zinc helps balance estrogen, okay? And it's also really good for PCOS. And it's also vital in the regulation of 
insulin, okay? So it can help lower insulin to thereby decrease androgens. Does that make sense? And as a side note, you become deficient in zinc when you consume too many carbs. So there's that relationship as well because too many carbs, too much insulin, zinc deficiency. And then you start producing too much of the wrong testosterone, which is DHT. And now as another side note, if you're deficient in zinc, you can also develop what's called hypogonadism, which is a situation where your testicles are atrophied. You're not producing enough testosterone and also low zinc can lead to low sperm count. But overall, zinc can help uh, balance testosterone and it can also um, prevent the overproduction of estrogen because it's also involved in inhibiting another enzyme called aromatase. And aromatase converts testosterone into estrogen. So that's something we don't want too much of in both men and women. So zinc can help regulate the amount of testosterone and estrogen you have. So if someone has oily skin, they have either not enough zinc or they have too much androgen coming from too much insulin. All right, the sixth point has to do with this dry, flaky skin, okay? You see this a lot with people that have dandruff. Uh, I had it uh, between my eyebrows, in my eyebrows, on my forehead, these little dry patches. Now, this is a combination of either a liver issue and or too much omega-6 fatty acids. And with me, that was nuts. I was eating a lot of peanuts, peanut butter, and nuts for the entire day. And I wasn't consuming enough of the omega-3 fatty acids. That would be in the fatty fish, sardines, and cod liver oil. Now, the reason I like cod liver oil over some of these other uh, products is because cod liver oil gives you a nice balance of omega-3 fatty acids, as well as vitamin A and vitamin D, because both vitamin A and vitamin D helps you with the dry flaky skin, as well as the oily skin, because vitamin A and vitamin D help you with these dry scaly patches, as well as the oily skin. Now, most of the population is consuming way too many omega-6 fatty acids in the form of soy oil, canola, cottonseed oil, and they're doing it in fast foods, they're doing it in salad dressing, it's in like 9,000 foods at the grocery store. And they're not doing enough omega-3. So they have this major imbalance. So it shows up in the skin. So when you see people with this texture problem in the skin, um, you know what their diet is composed of. And because this causes a lot of inflammation, they also have a lot of red spots and red rashes, and it creates liver problems and also inflammation in your joints as well. Now. As another side note, um, if you've ever heard of uh, chicken skin, where you have in the back of the arm or maybe the hips or your buttocks, you have this, this skin that has these rough little pimples, right? Where the hair follicles come out. That's called keratosis pilaris or chicken skin. So many people have that. And all they really need to do is start taking more omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, cod liver oil is a really good source. All right, the seven point is acne. If you see someone with acne, you know internally they have too much androgen. Now, as a child, I had terrible acne on my forehead, on my back, and it was devastating because it created a situation that I was withdrawing. I was shy. People make fun of you. And I was always trying to hide it with my hair. And boy, did I try everything. I tried scrubbing the acne because I thought it was dirt all sorts of creams, and uh, it never helped. It just made it worse. And oh my goodness, if I only would have known that acne comes from too much androgen, which is really too much insulin, and I was a total carbo junkie back then, and I made no connection. I did not connect the dots. I just kept eating carbs and washing my face more and more and more. But this is another reason why they put zinc in a lot of these acne creams, because zinc helps lower androgens, it helps shrink the sebaceous gland. But of course, if the diet is not changed, that zinc is not gonna do anything. So when you see people with a round face, a fatty face, with puffy 
tissue around the eyes, bloodshot eyes, oil skin, flaky skin, red blotches on the face. Don't evaluate them. Send them this video. Help them to learn what's behind this problem. It can be easily resolved just by giving someone the right knowledge for the right problem. Now, if you're new to my videos and you don't know about the solution involving what to eat, I created three very simple step-by-step -step videos. And the first video is called step one, start here. And then the second video is the second step. And the third video is the third step. And I attach this link to a playlist, which is down in the description. So click the button below and learn how to get started so you can transform your face into something that you want with just simple knowledge of what to eat.